A very good after, good evening, rather, to all our viewers, and uh, welcome to this week's to today's edition of the evening review. My name is Taiwan Jabela, your host. We are continuing to do this uh, show uh, from a distance because of COVID-19, of course. But uh, let's quickly look at today's front page of Namibian Sun. Tonight on the show, we are joined online by the Secretary General of the Public Service Union of Namibia, PSUN, that is uh, Matthew Hakuria. He has been uh, trying, of course, with his union to help the uh, MBC employees who this week uh, dragged the corporation to court, uh, demanding uh, MBC, of course, to pay them uh, for the salaries that were withheld during the strike that was recently held there. Uh, Matthew, thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, d tell us about, um, give us an overview of the case that you took to court this week. Yeah, the NBC employees went on strike under the banner of NAP. And uh, after the strike ended, uh, the employees did not receive their salaries for May, and there were indications that it was going to be paid for June. And on this, uh, upon learning this, then we decided to assist with these employees uh, because we felt that there is a violation of uh, Section 12 of the Labor Act, which uh, clearly states that. Uh, deductions should not be made from the salaries of the employees uh, either uh, unless it is a court order or it is in writing but then the corporation feels that they use the no work no pay rule uh, which is prescribed no way in law and uh, we felt still the same section 12 goes on to say even if the employee consented to the deduction this deduction should in aggregate not exceed one third of the take home of the employee so when somebody is not paid for the whole month you receive a negative salary like in some cases then automatically if you went over the uh, the, the, the more than one third which is uh, prescribed by uh, the, the, the labor act so that is why we approach the lawyers and we we we, we, we had to launch a court case which is still ongoing in this regard Also, just to brief also the viewers, perhaps, what uh, what is what was the nature of the ruling that was uh, made in court yesterday? Uh, of course, I, I know that um, the, the the judge did not go into the merits of the case, but but to, what what is your reading of the case itself, just for the viewers to to understand? Yeah, for for the viewers, I know that your your newspaper indicates something like the. The NBC employees lost the case or something. There was no ruling. 
the case was withdrawn to be launched again on a, on a technical issue. So the judge did not make a ruling because, as you said in your paper, that it was in the wrong court, so there was no ruling. So nobody lost the case, actually. Yes, yes. No, no, I know. Uh, and, mm. and I, I, I've seen mm. those sentiments this morning uh, from some mm. of the NBC employees. But, uh, you know, we, we didn't at all say that uh, you lost. We just say that the court, uh, the High Court has rejected it because they don't feel they are the right court for that decision. But uh, m moving on, um, yeah. the, 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 the fact that, because um, we know that NAPU was, uh, until recently, uh, sort of the bargaining union for the MBC employees, and we, know, we now know that uh, employees have also indicated, a lot of them, that uh, uh, they no longer have faith in that union. Um, what will PSUN uh, do differently uh, from their, from their uh, NAPU uh, competitors? Yeah, before I come to that, let me uh, clarify one thing. Uh, when we yeah. took the case to court, before we went to court, our team realized that the number that was allocated for the case was uh, a high court case instead of labor court. So we went to court to withdraw the case so that we can correct the mistake and relaunch the case. So it was an initiative from our side and engaging the other party that we are going to withdraw the case and then we proceed uh, on the correct path. Uh, what we can do differently, coming to your question, is SPSUN, we feel that uh, NAPU had information or they must have been in the know with regard to the financial position of the NBC and then shouldn't have let the workers into a strike while knowing that it will lead to nothing. And moving on to, to court cases and so later on withdrawing and so on. So what we would have done as PSUN, the Labor Act Section 80 uh, makes provision for a, a dispute of national interest. And NBC as a national broadcaster, when you reach a stage where you are not really uh, uh, reaching an agreement and you have to declare a dispute is better to to engage to, to invoke section 8 where the minister must come in and deal with the matter in terms of uh, section 1 or 2 of or subsection 1 and 2 of the, the, the of section 80 of the labor act because it is a dispute of national interest when you are dealing with the broadcaster we would have done that so and then obviously when you go on number three no work no pay principle or rule which we cannot find where it is in the labor act the labor act section 76 simply talks about the employer is not obliged uh, to pay workers that are on lockout or on, on strike you can pay if you want to but you're not obliged to pay this thing was coined by people themselves of no work no pay then you should lay down the modalities clearly that okay no work no pay will prevail during this strike but the deductions will be made in the spirit of section 12. so in that way you prevent a end of the month coming and the person receiving a zero salary or a negative salary for two months so that is what we're trying to avoid so that psun would have done differently indeed now you spoke about how napu um should have known the true the true state of mbc finances before leading uh, the workers into that strike but the same could also be said uh, mr akuria that uh, um, the work the no work no pay principle because normally the, the courts uh, follow the i mean the fact that there's a contract signed between the two parties the work the no work no pay um that, that is, is it not a is it not a, a no-brainer that um, you stand almost no chance to win anything when you have this no work no pay uh, in black and white um, um let me quote let me quote uh, Vedenga Kauraitha, the mbc chief of human resources who says in today's namibian sun of course uh, he was quoted from the court papers saying uh, the no work no pay rule means exactly what it says that employees participating in a strike 
will have their wages reduced and or withheld depending on the number of days in which they absented themselves and or withheld services from the employer. Now, this is not just a, a statement that is being made uh, out of nowhere. It is based on that agreement. What chance do you think you have as PSUN and of course the colleagues at MBC to have this thing turned around? Uh, that is his interpretation of uh, the no work, no pay rule. What we are saying is, when you are reaching an agreement, even if you sign it, this agreement should not be against public policy, like the Labor Act. The Labor Act in Section 12 is clear. An employer must not make any deductions from an employee's remuneration unless it's a court order or it is agreed in writing and consents a payment contemplated in subsection whatever. And then it lists which the types of, of deductions must be in writing and no work, no pay is not there. So the, the essence of our case is, even if the, the, the employees agree to a no work, no pay rule, it does not mean that come the end of the month, you forfeit the salary of the employee. You are dealing with human beings here. So the, the, there are procedures that you follow to implement a rule that you have agreed to. So for example, you, 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 there are other avenues you can do monthly deductions or you, you can do whatever deductions you come to an agreement. Since you are dealing with human beings, we have families, we have to put food on the table, we have to send kids to school, we are in a corona dispensation, people must buy supplements and all what, 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 what no? all these things. So no work, mm -hmm. no pay does not mean immediately that they don't all pay for feed the whole of the person. That is our assertion. So and that the court the court has to make a determination. I, I hear you, uh, Matthew. So what is the standard just for the sake we can step away from MBC for a minute? Um what is the standard practice uh, across all industries when people are embarking on a strike where it's not the the lunch hour strike where you work and then at lunch instead of going to buy yourself a a Coca-Cola somewhere, you actually embark on a, on a thing. This is a, a case of staying away from work completely. What is the standard industry uh, practice in that regard? My knowledge, uh, having been in the public, uh, public service, is that, uh, for example, let's say if you take a person who's, uh, who takes unpaid leave for whatever number of days that exceeds a month, you arrange with the employee, the employer, you come together in the spirit of Section 12 of the Labor Act, and you agree on, a, on an amount, you owe me $10,000 because you did not work for this number of days. I'm going to deduct you so much per month. Let's agree. Before you go to court, you get a court order. If the person is not willing to, 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 to agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, with... Um with 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 NAPU losing um, the majority uh, of uh, the members there, um, of course they have been given until September to rectify that that uh, anomaly as per the provisions of the Labour Act. Um, but it doesn't look like uh, they will regain that majority. Um, if NAP, if PSUN was to be to become the sort of the official bargaining partner in that regard um do would you enter into that bargaining uh, agreement knowing that right now mbc doesn't seem to have any money uh, and of course the mbc employees they have uh, stated their case uh, their, their challenges that they are facing from a financial point of view and um, i don't think you will be treated with uh, kid gloves yourselves uh, they will demand that as our representative we want you to uh, push our case uh, that will put you in a space where you you have to obey the instructions of your members but also knowing that MBC clearly doesn't have money uh, how would you intend to to, nav to navigate in that, that <coughs> tricky space uh, one the the financial situation the financial position of NBC is not cast in stone 
and uh, we are moving forward. Uh, two uh, negotiations for conditions of employment is not just about salary increment. There are other benefits that can be improved uh, in certain situations. The most important thing for us as PSU, and these are what we are doing with our shop stewards, is to train your people so that they understand the negotiation process. You do research before you go into negotiations so that you demand for what is possible and not the impossible. And you keep your communication lines open. You, your members will not, must not read in newspapers that the strike is over. They must know because they are part and parcel of the process. So definitely, should the opportunity present itself for us to be the bargaining agent at the NBC, we will grasp it both with both both hands, and uh, we will rise to the occasion. Given our capacity, I firmly do believe that. Yeah, and and Matthew, the, the because you are a public service union, um, the, there are also issues within the public service itself, uh, especially government employees who have gone for a long time now without an increment. Uh, are you getting any sort of pressure from your members to say, speak to, to the employer, which is government, to look into our plight, or is it a bit calm in, in that space? No, the, the pressure it never ends uh, on, on, on a union, uh, for example, like PSUN, for members who want an improvement on their conditions of employment, especially in the public service where they've been, it's been for a long time. But the civil servants have also realized and they are aware that NAPU has agreed to a 0% salary increment. And NAPU is a majority union, the, the one that has the exclusive bargaining, bargaining status uh, or position. And they, had, they were given the answer. So they, they do realize that uh, they are in this situation, but probably there is not much that can be done apart from uh, if people can remobilize and migrate to unions like PSUN and then we can start pushing. Indeed. And, and just on a general note again, Matthew, the fact that um, the economy of Namibia is at, uh, it's on its knees uh, so much that there are so many jobs being lost. Um, um, and because companies, a lot of companies, forget about MBC again for a minute, a lot of companies cannot uh, afford increments. Some of them have actually cut people's salaries and stuff like that. Um, in, your, in your history, in your, in, your, in, your, in your time in the union space, um, is this the worst space to be in now as a, as a unionist or as a union that you have members in the general workforce um, demanding certain things, but the reality on the ground really is that institutions simply do not have the resources. Is this a difficult moment to be? Is this the worst time to be a union? Actually, uh, this is uh, not actually one can say the, the worst time. This is the best time to be a trade union instead of being in a union because you are challenged to rise to the occasion to handle expectations of members despite the odds uh, pointing in a different direction to be creative, to create those necessary conditions for the workers to, to enjoy their rights. So it's a situation where we say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going because you are challenged to rise to the occasion. You have to be creative because you have to serve your members. Indeed. And um, as, we, as we head towards the conclusion of this conversation again, Matthew, the, 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 the fact that um, you are not affiliated politically, uh, if that is still the case, <laughs> uh, <laughs> is, is, it, uh, is it also, is it, an, is it an advantage or disadvantage in a moment like this, that um, in, in a moment like this, is it affiliated or non-affiliated unions that, that sort of have an upper hand in really convincing, uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, work, workers to join your, employ, your your trade union, but also to to as, as a matter of fact, let me let me rephrase my question. Um, I 
is it when you are not affiliated, is it easier that way or is it easier when you are affiliated? And I'm asking because when you are affiliated, especially in the case of the NUNW unions and their affiliates, um, they have they have uh, some sort of proximity to power because they are affiliated to the ruling party. The ruling party is the one that is running government. Uh, so they have proximity to decision makers. But in your case, as non-affiliated unions, you are also in a position where you can actually, you have much, much greater freedom to say certain things that your other guys, your, 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 your competitors cannot say because there you have to observe protocol sometimes because uh, you don't want to step on the toes of certain uh, leaders. Um, uh, where do you see yourself in this mix of things? Do you have some sort of advantage? You see, Toivo, uh, uh, proximity to power gives you a false sense of power because you don't have control over that power. So when you are in trade unions and your relevance is determined by your political distance to a certain political entity, you don't control that political power. So as the times are now compared to the past, uh, as a country as we are becoming of age in terms of uh, political maturity, in terms of uh, political pluralism, it is better to be an independent trade union because even our own constitution, if you go to Article 95, it mandates the state to promote independent trade unions, not politically affiliated trade unions. What, 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 what was the intention of, our, of, of our, uh, those, the drafters of the initial constitution? What were they foreseeing? Secondly, uh, in National Labor Organization Convention 151, Article 5 is clear, uh, public authorities are prohibited from interfering in the establishment, the functioning and administration of workers' organization. And this is a United Nations convention. What was the thinking at, at international stage? Obviously, people saw red lights when political distance becomes an issue when, when you are a trade unionist. So currently, it is better it is more beneficial, and it has always been like that, to be politically independent or neutral and not to align to any sector. And we will remain as such until the end of times. That is the best position you can be in as a, as a trade unionist. You can't be otherwise. Indeed. Mm. The final question therefore, then, uh, Matthew, is um, the given the ruling in the court yesterday um, that uh, you did not bring your case to the right court. What is the way forward? How is this going to be rectified? And what, what is the way, the way forward as far as the MBC matter is concerned? Uh, the way forward, I will not uh, delve into that, but just to indicate that the case is still on. And the, the, the members, uh, our members at the NBC are fully aware of what is currently happening and what are we doing in the next course of few, uh, few days that is come. Indeed. Matthew, thank you very much uh, for your time today, uh, especially having to accept our invitation to the show on short notice. We appreciate it and uh, all the best with uh, the NBC case and, and many others that will be handling uh, soon. Thank you very much.